Hey guys, how's going? Uh, so today, in this video, I will show you how to create a data cube using Microsoft Visual Studio and SQL Server Analytics Engine. In this video, I will show you how to create a data cube given a data warehouse using Microsoft Visual Studio. Before we move on, we have four prerequisites. The first one is you need to have the SQL Server engine and the SQL Server Analysis Service engine. Both of them should be running. You can check this by go to the Start menu, find Microsoft SQL Server 2017, SQL Server 2017 Configuration Manager, and make sure these two services are running. If they are not, you may want to right click and start these two services. Third, you need to have Analysis Engine installed in your SQL Server. To verify you have the Analysis Service up and running, uh, you can check your Microsoft Server, uh, Server SQL Server Management Studio and in the connection panel uh, if you have that engine, you will see analysis service included. Besides the analysis engine itself, you also need the analysis service extension installed in your Visual Studio. You can verify it is installed by trying to create a new project. And if you find a project template named analysis service, multidimensional and data mining, uh, it means uh, the extension has already been installed. If you can't find it, uh, you can go to navigation bar, find the tools, and go to extensions and updates, okay, and install the Microsoft Analysis Service Project extension. As a last requirement, you need to have a data warehouse named student DW created on your SQL Server already. Uh, if it hasn't, please run the 10 scripts that I have uploaded on the Blackboard. So they will automatically create the student DW. So the student DW is a sw small data warehouse that has five tables. So these five tables are organized in a star schema where the center table is the submission for uh, the fact table for the submission. And it has four dimensions, including the student dimension regarding their background. Assignment dimension, including the name of each assignment and the due dates for these assignments. And on top of them, uh, we have a date dimension and the time dimension regarding when the submissions were made. Finally, uh, please take a note uh, who is the owner of the student DW uh, data warehouse. So you can check that in the properties and in the owner, owner section, uh, you will see the username uh, who created the student DW. Okay. So probably uh, you were creating that using SA, the system admin account, or uh, it can be your Windows account if you use the Windows login credential. Okay, so please take note uh, who is the owner of this student DW because we're going to need it later. Now we are ready to create a data cube for our data warehouse. So please go to your Microsoft Visual Studio and create a new project. Okay, the new project uh, for analysis service. Okay, so we want to choose this one, analysis service multi-dimensional and data mining project template and give it a name uh, for example my first data cube then you will see a solution explorer uh, popping up popping up okay so in the first step we want to right click on the data source and select new data source so if you have created the cube before, 
uh, you may see some connections showing up already. Uh, but in our case, because this is our first data cube, you need to choose create a data source based on existing or new connection. Then select new. Okay, so in this window, uh, click here and wait for a few seconds so Microsoft will find your server. This may take a few seconds, so please be patient. Okay, here we go. So this is my server name. And this is where you need to take out a note you just made for my prerequisite for. Right, so this authentication method here uh, needs to match the owner of the student DW data warehouse. So for example, my student DW uh, owner was SA. So I also need to change the authentication to SQL Server authentication and enter the username SA uh, and my password. But in case uh, you used your Windows credential to log on and uh, create the student DW, uh, then you need to also use Windows authentication here. So in my case, uh, my uh, my owner of student DW was SA. And also uh, specify the database uh, student DW in, uh, in this place and click OK and next. So here uh, you also need to switch to service account in order to make, make it work. Now, uh, because you have specified the data source, uh, your Microsoft Visual Studio is able to communicate with your database and as well as the data warehouse you just created. The next step is to specify the data source, views. Okay, so this is relatively simple. You can simply right click and new data source view, click next and choose the student DW as the data source. and move all the tables you find in the data student DW to the right by clicking this button. Okay, and click finish. So now uh, we are ready to create the data cube for student DW. Uh, we can right click on the cubes, select new cube, next. Using existing tables, Right, so in this step, uh, the wizard asks you to select the measurement group tables. Okay. So in this step, we want to select the table that contains our measurable facts. Okay. So in our case, it's the fact table, I mean the fact submission table. So choose that and hit next. And choose both score and fact submission count as the measurable facts. And all the remaining tables can be included in the dimension tables. Okay, now uh, the Visual Studio finds our star schema with fact submission table in the center and the four dimension tables surrounding it. Before we deploy this uh, star schema and data cube on the analysis engine, uh, we want to do one more thing. Okay, go to the dimensions list and edit each of these four dimensions. So here uh, you may want to move all the attributes based on which you may perform analysis from this table, I mean from this data source view into the attributes list. So for example, uh, suppose I want to uh, have a look at the submissions based on the daytime bucket, okay, like late night, early morning, and afternoon and so on. Okay. So then we want to move the daytime bucket, drag it and drop it into the attributes list. So for another example, if I have I want to uh, examine the submissions by hours, I can also move the hourly bucket to the attributes list as well. Okay, so the daytime bucket and the hourly bucket, uh, they form up a hierarchical relationship so we can also move the daytime bucket and the hourly bucket 
in a dimensional uh, in a dimension hierarchy. Okay. So then uh, you are finished. You can close the window and save it. Okay. So save the time dimension. So please repeat this step for each of the four dimensions. Okay. And include uh, whatever you want to uh, analyze. Okay. So for example, I want to analyze. Uh, Analyze submission by uh, day of week, for example. Okay, so for the student dimi uh, dimension, I want to analyze by last name. And age, okay, age group. So assignment dimension, uh, I want to analyze how submissions are done for each different assignment. Okay, so when you have refined all the four dimensions, your cube is ready to be deployed on the analysis engine. So this can be done by uh, right click on your cube, choose process. So this will deploy your uh, data cube on the SQL Server Analysis Engine. Okay, uh, don't forget to run it. Okay. Okay, wait for a few seconds until everything is done, and then you can close this window. Okay, uh, reload all just to up, uh, reflect the updates. So after you successfully deployed your cube uh, analysis engine, uh, you will be able to see it from the SQL Server Management Studio side. Okay, in your okay, so this this is your analysis engine, and you can see my first data cube su has successfully uploaded on this uh, analysis engine. So now uh, you are ready ready to browse the cube. Okay, right click and select browse. Okay, so in this browse option, yeah, uh, let me enlarge my window. Okay, so in, in this browse option, uh, you can analyze the measures based on your attributes in your dimensions. So for example, uh, I can drag and drop the submission count into the center window. So suppose I wanna see how submissions are made by, uh, let's look at it by time. Okay. So how the submissions are made based on our bucket. Then we can drag and drop the fax submission count from this measure and the daytime hour bucket into the window as well and click execute. Okay. So this will give you a view, a very nice view showing how many submissions are made in each hourly bucket. For another example, uh, I can also do daytime bucket. Okay, removing the hourly bucket for now. Okay, to see how submissions are done in AM peak, in evening, in late night, in lunch time, and so on. Okay. So we don't have to write the SQL query, like select submission count and join the tables doing some filtering and so on. Okay. But simply we can do drag and drop to analyze the data in a very, very convenient way. You can also associate multiple dimension attributes together, like uh, putting uh, the student last name into this window as well. Okay. So you can see uh, for each student, okay, how multiple submissions are made for e by each student in different daytime bucket. For blue, uh, this guy made this many submissions on different time buckets. Okay, for different person, okay, how submissions are made. So sometimes some of the attributes are missing from the current view. Okay, so for example, uh, we only did day of week. So what is it? Day of week. So day of week, like the number from one to seven. 
representing Monday to Sunday. But this is not, not just a number, but not like a Monday, Tuesday uh, in uh, English spelling. So if we want to incorporate more attributes, uh, we need to go back to the dimension. Right. So for example, in the date dimension, uh, we can edit by selecting view designer. Okay. So uh, in this case, Okay, I think day name, uh, the day name should be the one uh, with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. Okay, if you're not sure, you can go back to your SQL Server Management Studio to have a look at the table by selecting the first thousand rows and so on. Okay, so but what, what I mean is, uh, we can always update the dimensions to accommodate your uh, additional needs. Okay, but okay. Uh, but please make sure uh, when whenever you make ch make changes to the dimensions or the cubes, uh, please reprocess the cube. Okay. And sometimes it asks you to re-enter the user name and the password. Okay. But you just need to reprocess the cube and rerun it as well. So this way, uh, all the changes that you have made will be reflected to the cube. Okay, so this time, uh, if I browse the cube again, okay, right, so this time let's look at the score instead of the submission. Okay, okay first of all, let's look at the submission count. So I just included the date name in the date dimension. See, the date name can be found here this time. So if I drag it up and uh, execute it, I can see how many submissions are made on uh, each day in from Friday to uh, Friday, Monday, Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Probably uh, no students have made a submission on Thursday, so it's not included. Okay, so when you have more than one attributes that you want to include in your analysis, okay, like for example, I want to see uh, the last name and date time okay, together. Okay, how many submissions are made by each student on each day? Okay, sometimes this view is not very uh, user-friendly. Okay, it doesn't expand or collapse uh, based on the hierarchies or some other relationships. So when we deal with many attributes, uh, we can use the Excel pivot chart. Okay. Okay, and that link can help you create an Excel pivot chart uh, in a very convenient manner. So for example, I still want to do the fax submission count analysis based on the student last name and day name, like Monday, Tuesday. Okay, so but in pivot chart, because we can put the last name on uh, on rows and day name on columns. Okay, let's zoom it out. Okay, so we can get a very uh, user friendly view about how many submissions are made by each student over here, and how are these submissions are scattered across different days in a week. For another example, um, if we do let's say okay. So because uh, previously uh, we have designed the daytime bucket and the hourly bucket as two attributes that form up a hierarchy. So we can drag and drop the whole hierarchy uh, in columns. Okay. So this way uh, you can also see uh, how many submissions are made by each student on each daytime bucket. But this time, uh, you can see there's a small uh, icon right here, right, uh, right li uh, next to each daytime bucket. So if you click that, uh, it will expand the day daytime bucket to the hourly bucket, okay, like this. So in late night, uh, we only have three time buckets. Okay, uh, we can class it as well. Okay, so this is very uh, convenient as well. So that's it. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please also follow my other channels and platforms. Thank you for watching and see you next time.